Algebra students, Mr. Lawrence here with a quick little video for you on solving multi-step equations. And I've got to tell you, second and eighth period, I'm very proud of how hard most of you have been working on this, trying to close holes in your learning. So I thought I'd give you a little video that you can refer to as you're doing your homework or you're not sure what's going on. Okay, so let's get down to it. Remember, we have five questions that help us do this. Now, for most of you, these are uh, these are review questions, but if you're new to AdWords, then these are probably new questions to you. But they should help you uh, figure it out. So the first question is, what is my goal? And that's always to get a variable alone. We want it to say b equals, or x equals, or 5 equals x, or something like that. Okay, then you ask yourself, what numbers are keeping the variable from being alone? That'll vary on the problem, but remember we're looking on the same side of the equal sign. So in this case, the 2 and the 3 are keeping it from being alone, not the 8, because it's on the other side of the equal sign. Okay, by what operations are they attached to the variable? Well. Uh, sometimes it's addition, sometimes subtraction, sometimes it's multiplication, sometimes division, right? Now I know you all recognize this, that's multiplication. And I know you recognize this, that's subtraction. Be careful with this one because it is also subtraction because the 3 is negative. I have a positive x, a negative 3. I have a positive x and a negative 3. So in this case, when you ask yourself, the 3 is attached by subtraction because this could easily be rewritten as x minus 3 or x plus negative 3. Either way, we're still talking subtraction. Okay, now how do I undo those? You always use the inverse operation. Okay, and the inverse of addition is of course subtraction and the inverse of multiplication is of course division um, and vice versa. Now you'll notice uh, that I don't ever use a division symbol when I'm doing it. I always use a fraction bar. I like my uh, work a lot better when I use a fraction. Okay, which should I undo first? Remember, who do you have to listen to? Saddam. Saddam tells you to undo subtraction and addition before you undo division and multiplication. It makes it a little less complicated. All right, so let's take a look at this first problem here. I've got 5 minus 3x equals 12. And I ask myself, what's my goal? Well, I want to get this x here alone. What numbers are keeping the x from being alone? There's a 5 and there's a 3. Okay, how are they attached? Well, it sure looks like the 3 is being attached by multiplication, right? 3 times x. Now, the 5 isn't attached by subtraction because, remember, that negative there, that negative belongs to the 3. And you have to do, if you have to do that so you recognize it, you go right ahead, you circle it or highlight or something like that. That negative belongs to 3. So it's not attached by subtraction. We look at the 5 and see its sign. It's actually a positive 5, isn't it? Therefore, it's attached by addition. Okay, which do I undo first? Well, according to Saddam, I am going to get rid of the addition first. How am I going to get rid of addition? By subtracting. And I always subtract or divide or multiply by the number I'm trying to get rid of. That makes it real easy. Okay, now, the right-hand side is going to turn into 7. The left hand side, please be careful, it is not 3x because I have this little negative that's attached with the 3x, so I have to bring him down. Now, x is still not alone. I've got this negative 3 attached by multiplication. I undo multiplication using division. What number am I trying to get rid of? The negative 3. That's why I divide by negative 3. If I do it to one side, I must do it to the other. Okay, so x is going to equal negative 7 thirds. Or you could tell me negative 2 and 1 third. Or if you're a fraction wimp, you could say this. Okay, 
but this is such a simple fraction, I really don't want to see a decimal answer on a problem like this. And if you just put 2.3 down, or 2 and 3 tenths, you are incorrect. It's 2.3, and then the 3 goes on forever and ever and ever. So they're not actually the same thing. Okay, now, on a problem like uh, number 2, 5x minus 2x minus 3, excuse me, 5x minus 2 minus 3x equals 17, I can't go right to my five questions. I have to try to simplify it first. And I like to see if there are any like terms. I've got a 5x and a minus 3x. Notice I grab the sign when I highlight. Okay, I've got this 2x, or negative 2 here, and then I've got this 17 over here. Now you're probably wondering why I did the 2x terms in yellow, but I didn't do two, two integers in the same color. Well, they're not on the same side of the equal sign, so I can't combine them through an equal sign. They have to be on the same side for me to combine them. But now that I have these two are like terms, I'm going to combine 5x minus 3x and get 2x minus 2 equals 17. All I did was bring this negative 2 down here. Okay, now it's a two-step equation. I'm not going to go through all the questions, but you certainly can if you need to. At any time you need to, you pause this video. Try to work this out on your own. See if you get the same answer I get. Uh, I'll let you know it's going to come out to be a fraction answer. That's intentional. Um, but go ahead and pause. See if you get my answer. Okay, here comes my work. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides. And then I'm going to get 2x is going to equal 19. And then I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides. And I know that half of, half of 18 is 9. And half of 20 is, of course, 10. So therefore, half of 19 must be smack dab in the middle, because 19 is in the middle of 18 and 20. Well, it must be 9 and a half. So I'm going to get 9 and 1 half. All right, two more examples, and then we'll wrap up this video. Now, in problem 3, I have 6 minus 8x equals 4x minus 6. Now, in this situation, I can't combine like terms because the equal sign is separating. Now, I know many of you were bothered by this problem in class the other day. And remember, we talked about it. We have x's on both sides. It bothers you. Take one of the terms away. Yeah, I'm going to take away the 4x. My new equation will then become 6 minus, combining these like terms, I get 12x. These will cancel, and I'll have negative 6. All right, now I have a two-step equation. And again, at any point, if you want to stop this video and try to solve it on your own, that's a great idea. And so I'm going to divide by negative 12. And I'm going to get x equals 1 because those two negatives would cancel each other out when I divide. Okay, one last example to look for. Uh, here's a situation where I have x's on both sides, but I have a quantity. So a really smart thing to do would be to distribute this 3. If you're really good at these, come see me, and I'll show you another way to do this problem. But for right now, I'm just teaching the class how to distribute. So 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times negative x, negative 3x. That'll equal 9x plus 12. I've got x's on both sides. I don't like that. I'm going to subtract off one of the x's. And this time, I think I'm going to subtract off this guy. I'm going to subtract off a negative 3x. But subtracting a negative is like adding a positive, right? So I'm going to add 3x to both sides. Yeah. And I'll get 9. Those will have canceled. I'll have 12x, and I'll have 12. Now I have a two-step equation. So I'll get rid of the addition first, leaving me with negative 3 equals 12x. 
Then I'll divide by 12 on both sides. And I'll simplify my fraction. And I'll get negative 1 fourth when I simplify that. And there you go. Of course, you can check all these answers by taking the answer you got and plugging it back in the original problem. I'll check number 3 here. If I do 6 minus 8 times 1, does that equal 4 times 1 minus 6? Well, this is going to be 4 minus 6, which is going to be negative 2. Oops, I'm out of room. Negative 2, there we go. Over here, I'm going to have 6 minus 8, and 6 positives, 8 negatives would leave me with 2 negatives left. And yes, indeed, they check. You can do that with any of these problems, okay? All right, I think a smart person does it. Okay, uh, that's going to be it for the video. Mr. Lawrence signing off. Have a good night, everybody.